Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome everybody to the Animation Station Podcast, episode 198. My name is Josh, and I am joined once again by Mr. Harold Storm. What to do, baby? I'm like a regular contributor Might on this Might as mug. well be now. Like our uh, <laughs> co-host from another podcast. Right. Um, but yeah, so Harold, uh, welcome back. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, it's been a while. Oh, wait, since you talked something. I don't know. <laughs> um, clap the sink out high. I don't What's going on? What, what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this this is our uh, animation Oscar episode, so we're going to talk about the uh, Oscar nominees for animated feature film, and we're going to kind of uh, briefly talk about each one, and then you know give our pick on who we think should win. Right. Uh, so uh, I guess let's kind of just go into the nominees. So uh, the five nominees are uh, How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World. I Lost My Body, Klaus, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. Um, So, Harold, uh, I I know that we we talked about this earlier, but I don't think either of us have seen Missing Link. Correct, yeah. I've seen all the ones, the rest of the ones that, like, are, two of them are on Netflix, which is cool. And Mm -hmm. then uh, I saw Toy Story 4 and How to Train Your Dragon in theaters, and then it was just... That was the so that's half of them there or four of them there, and then yeah, just that that was just the one that I never yeah. got around to seeing in theaters. So so I've seen three and a half, right? Um, because I could not finish. I I lost my body. Man, I don't. <sighs> I, I did don't not know, really like that movie. I, I did agree. Not know what it was like. I was I was bored. Uh, I didn't like ever. I didn't think the story was good. Like, the story bored me. I was not a big fan of the animation. I agree, um, yeah. And, yeah, like, I, I was just, uh, I, I, I just couldn't. So, um, sorry, it, I lost my body. Uh, it was like, it was like, uh, Idle Hands. That's what me and Caleb were talking about. You remember that movie, Idle Hands? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's basically what that was. It was like the Frenchified version of that. <laughs> en Francais. Oh man, uh, jeez. Uh, so yeah, I mean, let's kind of go into each one. So, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, 2019 DreamWorks film. Uh, again, I'm going to probably butcher everybody's name, so get ready for that. Um, it was directed by Dean. Is it Dubois? Dubois. Dubois. Dubois sounds better. Uh, starring uh, Jay Baruchel, America Ferrera, and F. Murray Abraham. Uh, among others, uh, Kristen Wiig and other people. So uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It was it was a great conclusion to the How to Train Your Dragon, you know, series. Uh, in in my personal opinion, yeah. What about you? No, I loved it. Um, I was talking to a friend about how I went and saw this, and it was just funny. My my wife wanted to go see it. She loves these movies. Um, and one of our friends had come over and, um, the two of them were just like hanging out whenever I'd got home before we went to watch it. And she had a good old time at this movie. She drank like a, they, between the two of them, they drank a whole bottle of wine. So she was feeling good at this, <laughs> but it, I love this movie, man. Like, um, it was a little strange to me when it first came out that it's not, it wasn't like how to train your dragon three. Yeah, that was that was a weird one because like we had the first one and then it was How to Train Your Dragon two, and then this one is How to Train Your Dragon, the Hidden World, the, the Hidden World. It, it just felt weird that this was not a three. I love the uh, I love the dual love story in it though. I know that's probably like that tugged right at your heartstrings too. I know you're a fan of a good love story, so like oh always the fact that we have like two of them in the in one movie. I was like, man, I bet Josh loves this, and you already love that series. So I was like, dang. Mm-hmm. And whatever uh, Kristen Wiig's character was trying to do, that right. <laughs> that, <laughs> that right. really weird love thing. I thought it was a good a good ending to the series, um, especially something that I had fond memories of watching the first one. Um. So yeah, I I thought I thought it was a really good end. Uh, to me, this was one of 
my favorite films in general of of the year. Yeah, I agree, man. I um I really love the animation in this and then yeah, like the stories within the story thing was really cool and I thought it tied a bow on the on the series real well. Yeah. Um and then we have uh next we have I Lost My Body, uh directed by uh Jeremy Claplin, uh starring Hakim Ferris, uh Victorie Dubois, uh oh my gosh. Uh, and, uh, Patrick, uh, Assume Sao, uh, Desumi Sao, Desumi, Desumi Sao, Desumi Sao, yeah. I think I the C think... with the little funny thing makes it the S. Yeah, like, sh- sh- I d- sorry, my, my French is one semester, and we didn't get that far. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, uh, like I said earlier, this one, I, unfortunately, I could not get through. I got about halfway through, and then uh, my phone was more important. So I apologize that. But I gave it the old college try. I tried the as best I could. They did like the. Um, they did like the Mr. Magoo as well with like DreamWorks. That's the production studio that did this movie. Um, they teamed up with TeamWorks for the 2019 Mr. Magoo. Really? I did not yeah. know that, that was a thing. Yeah. Huh. Um I don't think it got like a super wide release, but you know me and Caleb talked about that about cuz I thought it was exciting how many nominations Netflix um stuff got. And he talked about that as far as like from movies. Uh he brought up a good point that um you know, it's not like you don't have that same feeling of whenever you go to the movies to watch a movie as whenever you're just watching it at home. So, like, you have more of a tendency, like, if it's not interesting to you, if you're at home, you could just pop right on your phone. Well, if you're at the yeah. movies, you're not going to do that. You're not going to pull your phone out in the movie. If you're a normal, rational human being and um, not, an, not an awful, awful person. Right. Well, I mean, more more than likely, you're not going to, I should say, I guess. Yeah. But. You're more prone to do that if you're just at home watching it on the couch versus like you're out at the movies. You know what? I never thought about that, but that's a very good point. And so, not saying that this is a good movie because I didn't like it either, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, it's getting, it's got, it got so much, you know, praise and everything. I think it's got like an 80 on uh, Metacritic. Um, and I, I don't know about uh, Rotten Tomatoes because who cares about that? site but um yeah like i've I, i'm just like i still haven't heard anybody tell me what's good about the movie <laughs> that's that's when like i've listened to some reviews about it and they're just like yeah this was like blah blah, blah. and i'm just like yeah but you you didn't like describe what was good about it right like oh man uh this is one that i mean at least you know it's not frozen 2 so which, ah, shade. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry, Frozen 2, uh, but you weren't good. Um, well, we weren't nominated, so it must not yeah. have been. Um, well, well, we'll talk about what we think should have been nominated, you know, a little bit later. Um, which, uh, hopefully, they're planning for 2020 and not 2019. We gonna see. Well, yeah. Um, but then we have uh, also uh, coming out of Netflix is Klaus. Uh, directed by uh, Sergio Paulo and uh, Carlos Martinez Lopez, uh, starring Jason Simpson, not Simpson, Jason Schwartzman, J.K. Simmons, and Rashida Jones. This was a big year in animation for Rashida Jones. Like, it was weird. Like, I, I kept hearing her in all kinds of things. I was like, I, I would just be watching and be like, is that Rashida Jones? Yeah, it was <laughs> Rashida Jones. But yeah, I, I thought um, this, this for me, uh, it came out in November. Uh, this for me was a a nice bit of uh, fresh air. I I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Um, and you you just uh, didn't you just like start? Uh, I finished just it, it. Yeah, finish it? yeah. I uh, it was one of those ones like not, not that I didn't like it. It was just like I started watching it, and for some reason I think we had to leave or I was doing something, so I'd left, and then I just never got back to it. Like got back to finishing it. But I remembered I was interested in it because me and you talked about it. 
and um, you had told me that you really enjoyed it. And when I looked at the cast, like I'm a big Jason Schwartzman fan because he was he's a good actor. But not only that, but he was like in a band that I really liked. He was the drummer for a band called Phantom Planet that I really like. Is it a and Captain so, Planet cover band or a tribute? Kinda, band? kinda. They should have been. Oh, that was a missed opportunity. I know. <laughs> they did the uh, they did the intro song for the, a show called The OC. Oh, did and, they uh, do the, um, the California. California? Oh, that's awesome. I love that song. But uh, so I've always just been a fan of him, and like uh, anything he's in, I like. He's was in a a uh, what movie was he in with uh, Tom? Wasn't he in a movie with like Tom Hanks or something? Uh, um, Jason Schwartzman. I forget. He was in a movie with someone that I really enjoyed, and I'm trying to think of what it is, but I can't think of it off top. But and then yeah, like you said, Rashida Jones, J.K. Simmons, um, Norm Macdonald too. Oh, was it Moonrise Kingdom? Because he uh, was in with. Uh, uh, oh no, I was I was I had got back. I was getting back to Klaus. That that's the rest of the cast that's in Klaus. So it's like J.K. Simmons, Rashida Jones. Uh, Will Sasso really enjoyed. Yeah, Will I Sasso. just it was like a, a lot of cool people like in this movie. So um, Norm Macdonald was there. Yeah, and you're like, oh, Norm Macdonald. Yeah, it's insane. I'm trying to remember who he played. Uh, Norm Macdonald was the uh, the postman. oh the the guy that was on the boat, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like it's not the postman, the ferry man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, I thought it was cool, though. I, I liked it a lot more than freaking I Lost My Body. So Which yeah. I guess that's not saying much. Oh, I forgot, but... uh, we forgot Joan, Joan Cusack. Oh, yeah, right. As the Mrs. Crumb, the... Yeah, the... Other antagonist. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought that... it was cool, man. Uh, yeah, I think... Really my... impressed with what Netflix is doing. Oh, definitely. I think my only issue with it was the... Um... Like I, I loved what they did with it. Um, m- the problem for me was there. They put one like pop song in there during like a montage scene that I wouldn't have put in there myself. Like felt disjointed. You thought? Yes. Yeah. Because like everything else, there's no, there's no songs in the in the in the movie. No anything like that. And then there's this like super pop like candy corn pop song and i'm just like oh this isn't this isn't filling why is this here <laughs> uh i'm like for me like i've never liked stuff like that i'm i'm more of a just put that in at the credits when people are leaving anyway you know you can you can put that in there just you know if keep everything like be consistent you know and it, that was the only thing it, it almost took you out of the movie when you hear that and you're like, oh, that's right, this is a, you know, a kids movie esque thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, next we have Missing Link, um, which is Studio Leica, um, directed by Chris Butler, starring Hugh Jackman, David. Oh, is it? Wh- Williams. 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 Uh, Williams. Uh, we'll go with Williams. Uh, Stephen Fry, uh, Zach Galifianakis, Zoe Zaldana, uh, Timothy Emma Thompson, Oliphant. in there, uh, a lot of good, you know, good actors and actresses. So yeah, uh, this one I wanted to see because I do like Leica. Um, I just, for whatever reason, uh, it came and went for, in theaters for me and I just, that's ne- what just happened to me. To yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It was like because they did that. There are some people that did Kubo. Yes, and so the stop motion feel. I'm, I've always been a fan of like the real quirky stuff. Stop motion. Me and you have watched a couple films that were like different yes. animation styles that were not necessarily like my favorite, but at least it was something different. You know what I mean? Kind of refreshing. Mm-hmm. Not like and the so. same 3D CG animation that you know. All right. of everything is going towards. Yeah, it's like at times it feels like it's like Pixar sets the standard, and everybody's like trying to copy that. Yeah, and, and it's just kind of annoying. And that's one thing like we've talked about. Uh, Gavin and I have talked about Leica on the show before, um, but that is one thing that I love that Leica does that they always take chances. Like they right. don't make the same cookie cutter anything like that. Like they go pretty crazy with their stuff. I mean, like we have Coraline. Um, then we had, you know, like, uh, 
something like uh, Paranorman and Kubo, uh, uh, Box Trolls, um, Missing Links. I mean, they they do different things with all of their stuff, and I love the fact that they do that. Like they they're not afraid to kind of like push that envelope. Right. And all of the stuff that they do, like all of their, you know, their animation and everything that they use, especially with Kubo. Kubo was just freaking amazing. Um, so that's why I wanted to see this. But again, like it, it just felt like it was in and out so quick. Right. Yeah. And see, this is one that I like, like we both said, we haven't seen it, but I would like probably just venture to guess that this is probably a pretty cool movie. Just based on their previous track record and how much I've liked their stuff before mm-hmm. and the voice cast and stuff. So I didn't have any particular qualms just because I didn't see it. Any, it yeah, like I didn't see it. So I can't speak to it. But if I, if I ended up winning, I don't think they've won anything. So if they ended up winning, I wouldn't be mad for uh, sure. They won the um, the Golden Globe. I'm talking about I'm talking Oscar. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if they. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so unfortunately, yeah, neither one of us saw that one. Um, apologies to Leica. Um, then the last one, we've got Toy Story 4, the fourth movie of Toy Story, directed by Josh Cooley, starring Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, uh, Anna Potts, uh, Michael Keaton's in there, um, Keegan Michael Key, uh, Jordan Peele, Keanu, uh, who, who, any, anybody, and everybody, because it's a Disney movie, um, right? Yeah. Uh, I. What would you think? I wasn't. I didn't like this one as much as three. Um, personally, um, just because it was like, I don't know. It was like the, the Woody and was it Sporky? Yeah. It was like the Woody and Sporky show, really? Because no one, like, none of the other characters really. Like, have grown to love or, like, super, like, um, central to the story. It's not as much, doesn't feel as much, as much of, like, an ensemble. It's more of, like, the Woody and Sporky show. I know Buzz I, is in there yeah. a little bit, but. But not that much. Like, honestly, right. to me, my favorite Toy Story, like, I still like Toy Story 2 the best yeah, me out, too. Of, out of all of them. Um, just because, like, I felt like that one actually did a really good job of, you had two different storylines going and they did a really good job of you know making like you know writing two different storylines like that are going to intersect um but it's not anything that's like heavy-handed and this one i just felt like and they did a good job of you know giving each character enough screen time i mean it was definitely about woody um and then buzz which i mean all of toy story is mainly about woody um but I, I liked two, and this one it was just like, yeah, this is just the Woody and Forky show, and I didn't really care about any of the other characters. Uh, I, Bo Peep coming back was cool, I guess. Uh, I didn't really care, like when they're like, oh, she's gone in Toy Story three. I was kind of like, well, yeah, that happens, you know. It'd be like that, yeah. Toys come and go. I mean, it's you know, it's the way life works. Uh, but yeah, to me, I was just, I, I was very meant on this, but I'm, I'm, am very meant on Pixar stuff. I don't like a lot of Pixar stuff. I think the only Pixar that I've like really, really liked was a Bug's Life. Oh so, yeah. So like Dang, their that's, second. That's throwback. Yeah. Like their second one. Yeah. So, it was Toy Story and then Bug's Life. Wasn't yeah. It? So like, <laughs> I think, I think that's where I'm at and I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, I like you, you can be done making Toy Stories now. Like, they don't need to make Toy Story 5. We don't need, right. any, like, a 6 or a 7. We don't need more Cars. Cars 3 was a colossal waste of time. Oh, my God, um, yeah. The worst sequel that they've ever made was Incredibles 2. Oh, I never did see that. You didn't it's, like that one? You do not have to watch it. It is garbage. I did love that first one a lot, so... Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'll just stick with that one then. Yeah, I mean, the first one's all right, but yeah, the second one's just, it's like, why, if you were going to wait all this time and this is what you gave us, it's like, hmm, great, maybe you just shouldn't have made it. The hype was real when I was coming out, though. Yeah, because everyone 
thought they remembered how great the first one was and then we watched the first one in uh to gear ourselves up for the second one and it was like oh yeah this movie's not that great (laughs) i will say like uh speaking of toy story when three came out everyone was gassed up man like oh yeah i was stoked about that and i definitely cried in theaters 10 like what 10 15 years since we had one some ridiculous amount of time they hyped that one real well but and then it was just crazy the mix of people when I went to watch it. It was like kids, obviously, but then like everyone that grew up with it, also seeing everyone there that was like your age, it's like, oh, well, that makes sense. We grew up with this movie. So, yeah. And then this one was just like cash grab. Yeah. I mean, that'll happen though. I mean, it's, yeah. you forget that these, it's a business and they're trying mm-hmm. to make money off of it. But I mean, look at all the Marvel movies. It's just crash grab, you know, it's just for cookie sure, cutter for movie sure. after cookie cutter movie. And right. Sorry. False stakes. Yes. False stakes galore in all the movies. Yeah. I, exactly. It's like, that's that's the problem with the Marvel movies. Like, there's no, like, stakes. It's like, oh, everyone's going to be fine at the end. It's just the right. way it works. Everyone's got that plot armor, baby. Yeah. It's it's a bit too much. And But you know what's going to be great? Because, I mean, like, as we're saying this, there's going to be people who are like, but Tony died. We're like, well, oh, yeah. and so... He was probably yeah. going to die anyway. Probably had still had poisoning from when the thing was all leaking inside of him. Well, it took him all these movies to get to where something like that actually happened, yeah. too, though. Like, so. and, and like, oh, God, Black Widow's coming out. Every time I see a preview for that, I'm just like, who <laughs> Big cares? sigh. It's, it's, it's like, who cares? Like, this doesn't matter because, one, she's dead already, so... They're gonna do some stupid thing and bring her back. Man, I would that would bum me out. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'd be like, what the heck? Well, I mean they're going to, dude. I mean I hate to I hate to say it, but this is they're gonna be like, Oh no, she came back. She somehow yeah. had some sort of thing that didn't let her die and They're so gonna wish her back with the like, Dragon Balls. Pretty much, yes. That's that's what Hawkeye's doing in between Avengers he's movie. Got, he's just getting gathering the, the, the Dragon, Dragon Balls. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Shinron <laughs> Please bring his, back. I don't even remember her name. We find out his wife actually changed her identity, and she's Bulma. <laughs> well, I mean, she is uh, Wendy from uh, Gravity Falls, so you never know. Oh, happen. really? Yeah. Yeah, she's in Freaks and Geeks. I yep, remember. she's yeah. Uh, oh, she. What was her name? I forget her name. Uh, Lindsay something. Uh, hold on. Vamp. Uh, I remember that she, I would mix her up. I thought she was like great value, um, uh, Juno, whatever that actress's yeah. name is. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> Linda Cardellini is her name. Linda Cardellini is her name. Successful yeah. vamp. Um, wow. <laughs> great value Juno. What is that actress's name that I'm thinking of? Vamp. <laughs> uh, yeah, she was in Inception. She was in Juno. I can't think of her name off the top right now, though. Um, Ellen Page. Ellen Page is her name. That's it. That. See, vamping works when when it does when done well. Vamping works. You think I'd be better at vamping, but I just freeze up. <laughs> uh, hey, at least you're not like Gavin. Like when I say Gavin vamp, he's just like, what? What do you want me? To he's do? like, hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Not even that. It's just like silence. He doesn't say anything. Oh my god. Just like, Bro. He's so, he literally freezes up. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, I did better than that then. Yeah, so yeah, Linda Cardellini, so um she she's good with an axe. Right. I don't know. Oh, she's also in Brokeback Mountain. And she's Velma she? Scooby Doo. Oh right, yeah, I remember that. Interesting. That was, she was fine in that too. Oh, um, uh, in Brokeback or Scooby Doo? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, so yeah, that, that's how much uh, I think we both enjoyed Toy Story 4, the fact that we went on and talked about Brokeback Mountain and Scooby-Doo. So, right that's on. It. Those always come up when we're talking, though. Yeah, always. I mean, Brokeback, <laughs> like 90% of every episode we're on. We usually cut it, um, but you know, today, you know, who cares? That's editing magic for exactly. you, am I right? Movie. Anyway, um, so what do you think? Uh, so the, these are the five that were on here. Uh, snubs, like Big Snub obviously was Frozen 2. Um, another snub, which uh, best animated film that probably should have been on here and probably would have won, but Disney is stupid. 
Uh, they still, for whatever reason, say that Lion King is not a is not a purely animated movie. They still call it a live action. What? That's yeah, dumb. I completely agree. I'm like, bro, the, I don't think there's... It, well, everything's Oops. computer, right? I don't think there's a single bit that's live action. Those are some well-trained lions. <laughs> exactly. They can talk and everything. I, yeah, I say I didn't, I didn't watch the movie, so... Uh, it was... Did you ever see the animated one? It was just like that. It was just like that? Oh. <laughs> Everyone kind of crapped on it, but I'm like, this like this is the same exact story that everyone loves. Like, I don't get it. Uh, I just didn't like the like from what I saw, like nothing. Like the lions looked very, you know, too real. Yeah, I saw. Did you see a couple? I saw a couple artist renderings. Oh of, like, yes, those looked amazing. What it would look like? Yeah, I was like, dang, this is crazy. When people can do a better job than the studio. Mm-hmm. I mean, look what Sonic, look look what happened with Sonic. I mean, that's what happened with them and they're like, uh, now we get a new brand new Sonic in like a week. Man, that was like I don't know what you thought about that whole thing, but that was like big yikes energy to me cuz I'm like is that going to be the new standard that they put something out and then it gets crapped on and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we heard you. Like, we'll go change it." I kind of like, I unfortunately I think it will be, but I don't want it to be. That's like, yeah, it could be possibly setting like a dangerous precedent. Yes, I, I'm, I completely agree. Because, yeah, it's when you think about it, it's up to studios to do what the studio thinks is great. And how do we know that what the original movie was not going to be great? Like we, we don't know, and, and that's the that's the thing that kind of sucks. And I, I was going to see it either way. Like if if nobody else was gonna go see it, I was totally gonna go. I was gonna go opening night and see right. that movie. Um, because I'm like I like Sonic. I'll watch this Sonic thing. Is it gonna freaking be... John Ralphio was the voice? Exactly. Too, so. I'm like a freaking John Ralphio. I'm definitely gonna go see it. John Ralphio and Cyclops, my boys. Um. So yeah, I, I was I was all in it 100. percent um, and then they were like, oh, now we have to push it to February because all you whiny people were like, oh, it doesn't look good. Someone I was talking to was say, or was talk, was saying, like, how much of a trip would it be if they had all, all along had a different version ready and then released a trailer like that just to, like, get buzz? And I'm like, man, I wouldn't put it past, like, I, freaking... Yeah, I, I would totally, that would be amazing. That's nuts. I I'm would like, I would like real. them to do a uh to do two versions. Like get the original and then like the theatrical like have like the original like the, the director's cut version and then the theatrical version and have them two different like the completely different art styles. Man. I think that, that would, would be, be funny. amazing. Like theatrical version and you get like what you got in theaters and be like, or you can get the director's cut and it's the original version. I would totally At least didn't do like that. The cats thing when I like, got like a patch update halfway through, like while it was already released, like that would be hilarious. Like if you get if you get cats like pre patch, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah, so I, I, I what what were we talking? What brought this about? What, why did we start well, talking, we're talking about, about Sonic? We were talking about snubs, Oscar oh, snubs, snubs, snubs. But why we were we were just talking getting... about Sonic? Well, we got to whenever oh, it was King, like Lion King, Lion King. Yeah, That's changing right. it. Yeah. Um, there was one that I kind of thought uh, I really. Uh, it came out a little bit later. Um, uh, Blue Sky Studios uh, with uh, Spies in the Skies. Oh I, right, I loved Spies in the Skies. I thought it was. You great. told me you liked that. Um, I also liked that it wasn't a sequel to anything. Right, it was just like a standalone. Yeah, standalone movie. We're probably not going to get another one since Blue Sky is now part of Disney. Um, Did that was that the one with Tom Holland? Yep, uh, Tom Holland, Will Smith, and, and Will Rash- Smith and Rashida Jones. Man, Rashida is I'm getting you, some like, work, Rashida, my guy. She's just like, I'm just going to do all the you know animated. I'm just going to do all voiceover from now on, and I'm you just sweet, like, you do it. You sweet, beautiful newborn baby deer. Oh, that that sweet, beautiful sunfish. Dude, have you ever looked to see what a sunfish looks like? It's like ugly as butt. Yes, but that's why she's a. Be- <laughs> I never that's knew. Why she's a beautiful sunfish. Well, that's funny too, because like I never knew that, and I looked up what one looked like after that episode, and I'm like, this looks terrible. What? 
Oh, man. That's so funny. Rashida, if you're listening, come on the show. You're a beautiful sunfish. More beautiful than any sunfish. <laughs> um, Rashida Jones, also, uh, we're going to go back to, we're going to bring this back to uh, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Uh, we can tra- We can put her next to... Uh, I w- okay, I think we can do I think we can do Rashida Jones to Kevin Bacon in 6. Really? Yes, cuz if we go Rashida Jones uh was in Oh shoot, what what's that movie? What's that movie? Uh, Rashida Jones was in What happens in it? Oh, dang. Uh she was in Freaks and Geeks with Linda Cardellini. She was? Yeah, she's like the bully. Oh my god, I guess I forgot that was her. And then Seth Rogen, or, yeah, Seth Rogen was in that too. Yeah. Um, so we go, uh, f- and then we bring Linda Cardellini was in Avengers with Christopher Evans. Christopher Evans was in, oh, I think I lost it. I had oh, it in my it. head. I think I, I had it in my head. Because I was getting my way up to, uh, up to, uh, I don't even remember. Forget this. I'm tired. <laughs> That's okay. That was a good try. Yeah, we can we can play it later. Um, but no, yeah. Uh, so yeah, bring him Freaks and Geeks back because Linda Carlin was in that. Um, and then I think you have one. Oh man, Weathering with You, Makoto Shinkai's uh, follow up to 2016's Your Name. God, it was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, it just breaks my heart. And this is the one we were discussing earlier that it was like. Well, is this going to get like a 2020 nod because it was released in the United States in 2020, but technically it came out last year, 2019 in Japan. But Yeah, uh, 2019 in Japan, very limited release in America uh, in like, what was it, like November, December, like they did a very limited run of weather. Fathom event, right? Yeah, like a, like a two night Fathom thing, and then it was over, um, and then they did it again in January. So that's why I'm kind of hoping since it was a wider release and it's actually in theaters now and not just a fathom event. I'm thinking now they can pull it off and be like, no, we were actually going for the 2020 ones because we were kind of talking about it before. There's not like a whole lot of animation on the docket this year. Uh, We're getting, we're getting a trolls movie. Right. We're getting Onward, uh, and then we're getting something else. That Onward sound looks kind of dope, actually. Really? Because, like, I don't know, man. Like, everything I'm seeing from it, like, I, I'm not a fan of the character designs. I'll probably just go check it out. Who I knows? mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, see, probably, I'll, I'll probably see it. It's like what I said with freaking Missing Link, and I never went and saw it, so we'll yeah. see if I actually go see it. Yeah, true. So yeah, I I don't know. It's one of those where I'm just like, I don't know anything big that's coming out this year. Yeah, well, maybe. So. I mean, it could be dope. I hope they hope they do that. But who knows, man? I doubt they will. But yet again, Shinkai gets snubbed. Yeah, that was oh god when he got snubbed for your name. That was just like, bro, how? That's how you know the Oscars are a joke. Uh, I completely agree, um, Vamp. Well, I would like to see it get the nod in 2020, but I really doubt that it will. But I can't think of another time that that has happened whenever it got like a wider release or released in a different country that they have like successfully made a bid to like, well, maybe we should be in this Oscars. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'd like to see it. But it really did break my heart in 2016 when your name didn't get so much as a look. I'm like, are you guys serious? Like. And I can't even think of what won that year. Like, I would have to look it up. But I'm just, like, super bummed that he keeps getting snubbed for, like, mm-hmm. this amazing work that he puts together. Yeah, it's so it's so jank. Okay, so uh, the list of animated movies in 2020. Uh, we have Scoob from Warner. Oh, Madison wants to see that real bad. Um, we've got Onward uh, in March. Uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, which I think we've only seen the title. It's supposed oh, okay. to come out in November, but I don't think we've seen anything for it. Yeah, I've um, not heard of that, I don't think. There's uh, Disney Pixar Soul, which again, I don't think we've seen anything for. I saw a teaser for it 
Oh, um, there was a teaser? Yeah, it's like a, there's like a guy and he like falls into a manhole like that's uncovered classic style and then it's like just like it's just a short thing of like what it might be. Yeah, it's it's supposed from what I've, you know, kind of heard through the, you know, the the grapevine. It's it's kind of like an inside out thing, but it's, you know, everything which else. I loved. So we'll see if that's true cuz I loved that movie. Um, we're also getting Trolls World Tour in April, so Trolls that, 2. That ain't for me. Um, you didn't, did you even see the first one? I did, but I'm just like, eh. Yeah, like, I got seeing, a sequ- seeing a sequel to that, I'm like, not jazzed about, so. Uh, Minions 2, which is apparently Jesus Christ. Um, Wish Dragon, which, again, I'm not 100% sure, like, it was, it's talked about, and it's supposed to be coming out this year. But the only thing we've seen from that is concept art. Bunch of dragon stuff. A lot of dragons. Um, Wolf Walkers, which is Cartoon Saloon. Uh, same ones huh. that did Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea. Oh. Uh, the Queen's Corgi. I don't know what. I guess it's about the Queen's Corgi. Um, oh, I, I did forget about this one. Um, you get Chicken Run 2, which apparently is a thing. But no, uh, The Willoughbys. Wow. Uh, the Willoughbys, which is a, uh, it's going to be a Netflix movie based on the uh, book series. So there's a little book called The Willoughbys. Cool, so, I never heard of that. Uh, the, I, I hadn't really heard about anything about it, um, except when we went to the... Uh, what what were we at? I think it was uh, one of the one of the conventions that I went to. Uh, it was like an artist's convention. Um, went to it, oh, and, and that's where yeah. I like we we saw some stuff for like some behind the scenes stuff with Klaus. We saw Hair Love, and then we saw they you know gave us a little bit of a scene and stuff for the Willoughbys. And I'm Very like, dope. Was all it cool? right, it's. It looked really good, and I believe it's got a pretty good cast, a uh, hmm. voice cast set with it. Um, if you give me just one second. It sounds like it'd be really cool. I remember when you went to that convention in L.A., and it was like, you're sending me stuff. I think it was the one that you got some cool prints at that were like the Pokemon ones. Yeah, I, I can't remember what the the heck that play, thing was called. Which I don't know. Speak, me. Speaking of artists, I meant to tell you that Mike Anderson, at the time recording this, Super Bowl's already passed, but mm-hmm. Mike Anderson actually got to do an animation for Bleacher Report for the Super Bowl, which is insane. Really? Did he post that? Yeah, it was nuts. A uh, friend of the show, Mike Anderson, Josh has had him on uh, his show as well. It's just a good buddy of mine, but just doing big things here in Oklahoma, which is insane. Oh, that was that was for Bleacher Report? Yeah, it was nuts, oh, man. Oh, like I, I, I watched the thing. I didn't read the. I just read like the short animation thing. I right. didn't read like what it was actually about, dude. That's baller. Yeah, I went and looked at it on Bleacher Report's uh, Instagram. I was like, this is insane, dude. Oh man, that's that's freaking sweet. Um, okay, so yeah, so I got it. Uh, the cast for the Willoughbys. Um. Let's see, uh, here, here's the little brief synopsis. When the four Willoughby children are abandoned by their selfish parents, they must learn how to adapt their old-fashioned values to the contemporary world in order to create something new, the modern family. Um, starring Ricky Gervais. Oh, nice. Uh, Jane Kerkowski. Ker- Kerkowski? Huh. Not familiar Kerkowski? with her. I don't know. Uh, anyway... Uh, Terry Crews, Maya Rudolph, Martin Short, Will Forte. Um, wow, lots of SNL energy there. Yep. Yeah, so that's no it's, uh, it's no Rashida Jones. Unfortunately, she's not in there yet. <laughs> Maybe I'm I'm sure they'll bring her in for something. Uh, um, you never know. We we may get her. Let's bring. True. Let's get Rashida Jones in anything that we could possibly get them in. Rashida and her Jones. Oh man, yeah. So uh, I, that that's what I'm thinking with weathering. Back to weathering with you. Uh, I'm thinking they're they're trying to push it for 2020 because yeah, there's not a lot on deck that yeah. Unless unless Disney and Pixar pull something like some sort of rabbit out of a hat and do something good, 
Um, there, I will say there's not a lot of sequels, which is nice. Yeah, some original story yeah. action. Like, let's see, like, what sequels do we have? Minions 2, Trolls, Trolls. World Tour, and that's it. Is Ch- that it, yeah. Chicken Run 2, which may or may not be an actual thing. I remember that first one. I did like that movie. Yeah, a good old Aardman animation. Oh, but yeah, hmm. everything else like Onward, Scoob, uh, Raya, Soul, um, Wolf Walkers, Wish Dragon, all of those, Willoughby's, all of those are originals. They're not, you know, remakes or anything like that, which is which is going to be cool. Unless the Soul year of originals is, 2020, baby. Yeah, unless Soul is somehow connected to Inside Out and they... A spiritual successor, no pun intended. I'm gonna take your pun intended, because I mean, I, <laughs> if, if I was marketing it like the spiritual successor to, oh uh, no, but yeah, then, that'd be you know that'd be awesome. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it, to me like looking at this list without seeing any of these movies, just based on like titles and everything, I could see it being the clear favorite. Right. Um. But again. Who knows, really? Things could happen. And who knows? Maybe Onward's the best film I've never seen before. <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, okay, so we, we've kind of gone over our five movies. Um, which movie do you think wins best animated feature film in the 2020? Man, Is this 2019 19? or 2020? I don't understand. It's 2019 awards. It's a right? 2019 awards, but it's held in 2020. But do they right. call it the 2020 Oscars? I think so. Because they call it the, they call it the 2020 Annie Awards, but it was what? for the 29. Mm. I don't know. Uh, so the Oscar this year's Oscar. We'll go with that. This year's right. Oscar for best animated film goes to. Man, you know what? I think they're gonna pick. I think it's gonna go to Toy Story, and I hate it. But. This is this, like this is not see... them. Who cares what they're gonna do? This is what we're oh, okay. gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. So I would be happy, even though I didn't see it, to see Missing Link take it. Um, but my big like personal pick, I would love to see How to Train Your Dragon take it. Yeah, like to me, I'm like I think it would have a shot since it is the end of everything. Um, I right. I feel though. I really feel that it's going to be Klaus. That would be cool, man. I, I, that would, to me, that would be a curveball. But I would like to see like Netflix take one. Yeah, that's that's why, that's why like I think that. it would be. It would be like, can you just imagine what that would do for Netflix? Just be like, it would Yo, shake up. We the, won the best animated film. It would shake up the industry. Yes, um, I would like to see it. I almost said them just as like a, just to sow chaos. Like if they won, that would be insane. But I, I man, I don't know. I would like to see it, but I just don't know that that's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I would be totally fine with Missing Link winning. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Again, it did win the Golden Globe, so kudos, kudos there. Um, which sometimes is a good, you know, measure of this is going to win. Uh, I mean, like Zoo, that's what happened with uh, Zootopia Moana. Zootopia won right. the Golden Globe, and. People were like, no, but it's not going to win the Oscar. And then it won the Oscar, beating out Moana, because it was by far a superior movie. Um, so, yeah, I I would love to see How to Train Your Dragon do it. I don't, unfortunately, there, there's this small part of me that's like, I don't think it will. Um, yeah, I'll be bummed if Toy Story wins it. Oh, but my God, if Toy, Story, if Toy Story wins, I will have zero faith in the and the oscars going forward right um but i mean th- that's the thing like you have two things that are you've got three uh, th- uh three originals and then you've got two end of eras basically right because you've got the end of a disney era and then you've got the end of a dreamworks era so i think in in you know those de- are definitely your two big animation you know rivals so it's it's definitely like between those two. I mean, by far, I think How to Train is a better film. Um, but I think if they're go- like, who knows? They may pull a a Lord of the Rings and give everything to Toy Story Four, like they did with Return of the King. 
Yeah, I mean, there's really just no way of knowing. I'll, I'm going to be watching more than likely, so we'll just see what what ends up pulling it out. Yeah. So I think uh, I think we would both like How to Train Your Dragon, and I think we would both like Missing Link. Right. Yeah, and I'm that weird long shot that I think it would be upheaval and chaotic if Klaus won, and that's why I would love. No, you know, for, I would love for them to win. It would be dope. I just, man, I just, I don't know. I don't see it, but. If they do, that's tight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if uh, I lost my body one, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I, would, I would just be confused. I would be confused as well and just be like, did you guys actually watch it? Or were you on your phones like Josh was? <laughs> oh, man. Ha. Huh, well, so Harold, um, you got anything Got anything else you want to chat about? Uh, Not really, man. I mean, you guys definitely check out the Oscar episode I did on my show, Toons Toons Podcast. Uh-huh. After you uh, listen to me and Josh's here on Animation Station podcast, we got one coming out. We had the same idea in the same week, I guess. Yeah, and that comes out uh, Tuesday, correct? Uh, mine will be out Monday as well, Monday I think, same day. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Listen to Josh's, then mosey on over to Toons Toons podcast, listen to ours. Why do I get all your stuff on Tuesday? Uh, I don't know. That's so weird. I don't know. Huh. Anyway. I usually try to keep it to Mondays just for consistency. Yeah, maybe I uh, maybe I just don't see it until Tuesday, cause yeah, mon- be. Monday for me like I'm not really like paying attention to iTunes. Oh, uh, right on. So that may be it, cause like Monday, as soon as I'm like going to work, I'm like refreshing my podcast. Like, where's Animation Station podcast? Yeah. And there's a couple others that do Mondays. So I'm like, where's all my shows? Nice, yeah. Uh, let's see. We also have uh, our episode next week. Uh, we had the comic artist Sam Bragg on. Um, we talked about her two uh, web comics, uh, Wags and Hooves of Death. Which okay, so so here's Hooves of Death um, for uh, all all of you guys that are listening, and for Harold, uh, so you can kind of get a little bit prepped for uh, next week. Um, Hooves of Death is think think post apocalyptic zombies, right? Right. But. So the majority of the human race has been wiped out. There's like very few pockets left of humans. That means that all of these other creatures and everything that have been kind of like kept in, you know, had to hide and kept in the dark um, by the humans um, are now free to kind of be around like unicorns, for instance. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, and these unicorns, they, they have to fight off these zombies, too. And conveniently, they have a built-in shiv. Uh, yeah, so, that is true. Yeah, exactly. Um, but let's let's also say that the reason that they have this, uh, that, you know, this zombie outbreak happening is happening is because of the biblical apocalypse. Oh, what? So, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Lord. And what we find out, which I guess it's okay to spoil, because we, we find this out really early. Um, the reason that there are zombies is because Pestilence came in and was like, you know what, I'm going to create this zombie, these zombies. And then she just decided, you know what, I'm... I, because you know each each has their thing like war has his thing famine has his thing and then pestilence has their thing and then she's just like you know what i don't want to i just want to stay like i I, I like the world right now and i'm just gonna stay and you can't kill the zombies because death has decided he doesn't want to partake in the apocalypse so no one can die so you can't technically kill the zombies so these zombies that should be dying these people that should be dying from this plague totally fine and come back as zombies because death isn't there oh no so yeah it's great yeah it's got you know it's super interesting yeah and it's it's absolutely free on webtoon um yeah so yeah we've got sam bragg on to talk about that um that's gonna be super fun she also has a uh web comic that she does on her instagram about dogs Oh, and okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sold. And like how dogs just do dog things. What's her name again? Her name is Sam Bragg. B R A G G. I think it, I think she's Sam Dra- Sam Bragg draws. I believe is what her Insta is. Uh, but yeah, so she's on next week. Uh, then after that is episode 200 
um, where we're going to be doing True and the magical, ma- magic, ma- magical, mag- yeah. magic thing. Uh, That's a cute idea. Yeah, true, true hundred, true hundred episode, true hundred. It's going to be a thing. That's <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> so, uh, so Harold, where can everybody find you and the Tunes Tunes? Yeah, sure. You could find Tunes Tunes podcast on social media. That's T U N E S slash T O O N S. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. And then if you'd like to follow me, um, that's just Harold Story on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. H-A-R-O-L-D-S-T-O-R-E-Y. Don't forget the E. Get it right. Get it tight. Get it right. Get it tight. My goodness. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast. On Twitter at Animate Podcast, all of our episodes available, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, uh, YouTube, Spotify, and on our website, AnimationStationPodcast.com. Uh, we are still looking for uh, a co-host, so if you if you want to be a co-host on the Animation Podcast and, you know, talk about something, just let me know. Uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, that was a bit, you know, rambly, but who cares? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, let us know. You know, just you know, shoot us an, uh, an email or message us who you think should win the Oscar for best animated film. We, you know, who we think should win. Maybe you're one of those people that was like, "I lost my body, changed me." Uh, let us know, because oh, I, I would love to know why. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, so for the Animation Station podcast, I'm Josh, and for Tunes Tunes podcast, I'm Harold. Bye, bye, little butterfly. Bye. And scene. <laughs>